as you get closer to the feast day, more and more people come. Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello says Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Williamsburg is thriving. Oh, it's one of the strongest parishes in the neighborhood. It was established in 1887 to cater to Italian immigrants. And while the neighborhood surrounding it has changed, the makeup of its parishioners has remained the same, still largely Italian American. This parish is rooted in tradition. But the church itself is not very traditional. There's no pitched ceiling or bell tower, and there's a reason for that. This is actually the third church to house Our Lady of Mount Carmel. The second one had to be demolished to make room for the BQE. It was built a block away, and since there were so many churches in the neighborhood, they really didn't uh, construct it like a church. It could have been converted into a community hall. There was rumors that it was gonna be made into a bank, whatever. But the parish survived, which they didn't think it would because of the feast. And Monsignor Jamie says the annual celebration wouldn't be possible without his parishioners. People like John Nataro, general chairman of the feast. Uh, what do I not do? Planning this celebration of Italian heritage takes a lot of work. It's an addiction for a lot of us, so we're, we're always talking about, uh, you know, what we need to do for next year. This holy addiction began when John was just a kid. He's been involved all his life, and I remember him working in the bazaar, working in, in the shrine, doing all these things, and he was always involved in the feast. Even though he's now busy with three kids of his own and a full-time job as executive director of the Catholic Foundation of Brooklyn and Queens and of Futures in Education, working on the feast is personal for John. His father, Carmine Nataro, grew up in Nola, Italy, where the tradition of lifting the Giglio began. I grew up with him telling us stories about him lifting the Giglio and like they, they, were, they were like war stories and he would talk about like doing a lift for one hour and how his shoulder would feel. When Carmine moved to Brooklyn, he was too busy running his Greenpoint Pizzeria to be involved in Mount Carmel's feast, but his passion for it was hereditary and John took the reins. And now that his father has passed, the feast is a memory of the bond they shared. For many, it's a connection to the loved ones they lost. They see their parents and grandparents walking down the street holding their hands. They, when you lift that Giglio, they remember, you know, their loved ones who aren't here anymore and they're right next to them. You know, they lift that Giglio in their honor. The two-week event is described as an annual pilgrimage. While the neighborhood is now different, everyone who moved away comes back. John and his family live in Queens now, but still come to mass here every Sunday. He says the feast is a way to reach out to the newcomers in the neighborhood who aren't churchgoers. It is an incredible evangelization tool. We have the Giglio. We have the sausage and pepper stands. You're next, sir. Good job. We have the games, we have the rides, and these are all ways to draw people in. And now they're here, and now we've got this great opportunity to show them what we do. Now John's passing on the tradition to his own kids who take part in the lifting of the children's genome. I'm blessed in so many ways. I mean, for me, it's always been about my celebration of, uh, of my faith. And now you know John Nataro from Our Lady of Mount Carmel and how he makes up the pulse of the parish.